tape they found on Sullivan's body and brought back to Goff Barracks. <laughs> this Fraser again? And Kennedy. It's in both their statements. I don't have the tape. No, but you know who does. Classified information. Classified bullshit! What the fuck are you people running here? They're on private shooting war! Checks and balances, Mr. Carrigan. But between the jigs and the reels, we are winning. And innocent lives are being saved as a result. The source you wish to protect is army intelligence. Am I right? What did you say? I'll say it again, quickly. Malloy and Sullivan were killed for that tape. And army intelligence, MI5, MI6, call it what you want, are involved. And I want to know why, Mr. Brody. Then take it up with them. You ordered it. My participation was limited to the policing aspects of the operation. Oh, that'll sound wonderful when it comes out in court. What court? There'll have to be an accounting. Charges will be made. By you? I'll make a recommendation in my report, yes. Yeah, which I shall take to the DPP for him to decide. It won't work. What won't work? Not at my expense, it won't. My God, you're catching the Irish disease. You're getting paranoid. If necessary, I'm prepared to resign over this and start telling tales out of school. I don't think you will. You're a career officer like me. I mean it. You design the force and go public. If I have to. Listen, we're both professionals. We observe certain rules. Then understand. Without access to that tape, it is impossible for me to evaluate the evidence. I'm afraid I can't help you there. I have neither seen nor heard that tape. And frankly, I don't want the burden. Now, if you will excuse me. Who's Harris? Harris? I've never heard of him. his connection with the provost is. Why do you think he has one? Well, why else we did an IRA club? It's a Republican club. Same difference. Not every Republican supports the IRA. Well, it's okay, right. Otherwise, I could be putting my head in the news. I don't think you have to worry. One thing you can count on with the IRA is it'll be predictable. Yes. They shoot policemen. Yes, Teresa Doyle. You'll have to be saying in Bama. Pardon me? You'll have to be saying in Bama. That's why I'm waiting for it to come. That's okay, darling. I know these people. I take full responsibility for them. Anyway, you're so welcome to the James Connolly Republican Club. I'm Liam Philbin. I'm How Sinn Fein rep for this area and Club Secretary. Ingrid Jasmine. Ingrid. Hello, Peter Carrigan. Peter. Oh, yes, dude. He's got here, okay, then? Yeah, fine, thanks. Did you look at that football ticket? Here's the football ticket. Football ticket. Oh. Never misses a twitch. 15 fancies. Four. Thank you. Thank you. Well, congratulations. You've just contributed to a fund for Republican prisoners. Oh, really? Thank you very much. He's a prisoner. Down to you. Shall we go in? Is Theresa here? Uh, no, Theresa got lifted on Monday. Lifted? What for? Harassment. Happens all the time. She's okay. Yeah. She's okay. 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 And then one fateful morning, I shook bold freedom's hand. For right or wrong, I tried to free my land. And you dare call me a terrorist while you look down your gun. When I think of all the deeds that you have done, you have blundered many nations, 
divided many lives. You helped terrorize their people, you rolled with an iron hand, and you brought this reign of terror to my land. And you dare call me a terrorist, why do you load down your gun? When I think of all the deeds that you have done, you have plundered many nations, divided many lands. You have terrorized their peoples, you rolled them with an iron hand, and you brought this reign of terror to my land. You brought this reign of terror to my land. Thank you. There on the wall you see a picture of James Connolly, one of our greatest ever Irish leaders. And Connolly said many years ago that England has no more moral right to administer Irish affairs than it has to administer the affairs of America or Japan. No more moral right to uh, police us than it has a moral right to shoot us. So that is the answer, British withdrawal. That's, that's the answer, that, that's the answer, but innocent people have been killed. Yes, innocent people have been killed and are being killed. If you look at all the colonies, take for instance America, George Washington was called a terrorist in his time, Jomo Kenyatta was a terrorist, Archbishop Macarius was a terrorist. It's unfortunately, colonies appear to have to fight for their freedom. It is never granted willingly, they must struggle for it. Liam, do you know why Paul was with Mr. Malloy that morning? Yes, uh, Malloy was taking him to meet Harris in fact. Where? At a safe house. That you provided? Yes. Our interests coincided. In what way? Well, let's just say that our enemies became his enemies. Where is he, Liam? Well, he's out the back here, waiting for you. So if you like, we'll go now and see him. Right then, come on. It's crumbled, pushed this westward To the world of your life Some of us are deep to fight For temporary mountains high Here's your visitors now. Okay. Okay. I'll leave you to it. Thank you. Harris? Yes. How much has Liam told you? Only that Malloy brought you here and that you were sheltered by the IRA. And you find that reprehensible, hmm? For Malloy? No. No, he has his loyalties. But for you, an officer serving in the British Army, yes. I'm terribly sorry about what happened. I really didn't think they'd go that far. Why did you want to see Paul? I gave him a tape. Didn't you know that? Not till later. Coming here could cost me my life. Mine too. But unlike you, I don't have the IRA to protect me. I gave the IRA nothing. I was an army intelligence officer, co-opted to work with MI6 and then MI5 when they took over. PSYOPs. Our cover name was Information Policy Unit. Our official function was to liaise with the press and uh, prepare public liberations programs. And unofficially? We had our own printing press. We'd forged documents attributed to Republican sources. We'd provide material for the media, newspapers, magazines, television. Black propaganda? Yes. What kind of material? Well, whatever we thought was necessary. We'd invent stories, leak truths, leak lies, leak half-truths. Accountable to the politicians. Now, let's get one thing straight, Kerrigan. We were accountable to no one. The Prime Minister, Parliament, the courts, the great British public. It made no difference. They were all there to be manipulated. And that didn't bother you? Not against the IRA, it didn't. But uh, during the election of 74, our work became increasingly political. MI5 were running things. Our long-term objectives were abandoned. The new emphasis was on assassination teams, bounty hunters. But the PSYOPs unit continued to operate? Oh, yes. But with fresh targets. 
During the 70s, the Conservative Party was demoralized and divided. They had seen their party leader, Edward Heath, cave in against the miners' strike of 74 and were searching for a new leader from the hard right. So we, uh, we circulated stories about his private life. Heath was dumped. And replaced by Thatcher. Yeah, but that wasn't enough. There was a growing concern amongst the business people and the military that Labour were heading for a third term in office and that the moderates would be replaced by the left-wingers who in turn would be opposed to NATO and nuclear weapons. Remember, inflation was running rife. Industry was crippled by strikes. What is this leading up to? Treason, Mr. Kerrigan. Pressure came from the CIA to get rid of the Labour government. Jesus. They fed information to MI5 claiming that Prime Minister Wilson was a KGB agent. It was a joint CIA-MI5 operation, supported by others in Whitehall. Yeah, the whole bag of dirty tricks was used. Smears, break-ins, burglaries, phone tapping, blackmail, disinformation. If what you say is true... It all landed on my desk. And you believed it? I did when it was used by Alec Nevin the future Prime Minister's closest political ally, the principal architect of a victory over Edward Heath. You're saying that Thatcher was involved in this? No, but she was the main beneficiary. The files and documents I got from MI5, I turned into articles and essays for selected journalists and speeches for Alec Nevin. Why should I believe you? because it's all on the tape. Why else do you think they're trying to get rid of me? If this comes out with Nevin's explicit connections to the Prime Minister, the spotlight would fall on number 10. That's why his name is on the list. What list? Paul made a list of six names. Do you have them with you? I took them. Then I suggest you study that list very carefully, Mr. Kerrigan. Why? Because they are the prime movers. Nevin's ideological counterparts in business, industry, the military. Together, they formed the nucleus. Their priority was to wreck Labour's chances of ever winning another general election, and if necessary, were prepared to go even further. You weren't wrapping up in a blanket. Paul knew this. He heard the tape. He had the tape. That's why they murdered him. I think you're insane. I can prove it. Why would he lie? I don't know. Guilt, pressure, acute paranoia. I am as sane as you are. And I believe them. It couldn't happen. Kerrigan, it did. Why didn't you resign? I was a career officer. One hoped that the situation would change. But I also saw what happened to people in a similar position. Good men, ruined. So you went along with it? No. I asked questions about it. Oh, at first they were very understanding. Said that I was suffering from stress, mental fatigue, physical exhaustion. That I needed a break from Northern Ireland. So they sent me to the mainland as an instructor to the School of Intelligence. In late 77, I was posted back here. How did they find out about this tape? Because I behaved stupidly. Instead of keeping my head down, I had a row about it all. Consequently, I was put under close surveillance. Mail was opened, phones were tapped. And one night, they searched my room and found a backup copy of the tape stitched in the lining of my beret. So I took the original tape and ran. Still running. You say you have this tape? It's all there. Names, dates. I bugged their meetings. I wanted Sullivan to publicize it. Being an American citizen and a civil rights lawyer, I thought he was beyond reach. You were wrong. I'm afraid media exposure is the only protection I have. Do you have it with you? I have certain demands. What demands? Once I've delivered the tape, I want you to take me into protective custody. And I want you, Miss Jessner, to make it public. Agreed. I can't do that. Why not? Because he's not under my authority. He's military personnel. Kerrigan, you were brought here to investigate Paul Sullivan's death. He was murdered because of that tape. Where is it? 
Do I have your agreement? 